Hey guys, Mrs. Hill here. Today I'm going to be demonstrating for you the Rainbow Lab. It's our first lab of the year and I'm really excited that you're joining me. Um, you can see that I have already taken care of a couple of safety procedures before we started. I have my goggles on and I'll keep those on through the duration of our lab. I've also put on my apron to make sure that I'm keeping my clothes clean, which hate to get that double T dirty. And then um, I also, it's hard to see, but I am wearing closed-toed shoes. So um, I'm going to do a quick materials check and then we'll talk, and then we'll get started with the procedure. So first I have um, a test tube rack with six clean test tubes. I know that they're clean because they're upside down on the test tube rack ready for my use. Um, I have two clean graduated cylinders. One is a 10 milliliter and the other is a 25 milliliter. Um, I have a pipette. Sorry about that forgot about the bell. Um, and then I also have a dry erase marker. Um, I have a large beaker and it's hard to see, but it's labeled with a W. Um, this is not going to be my waste container for today. I also have a large beaker um, labeled H2O. This is just clean water um, from the tap. And then I have three smaller beakers. These are my chemical beakers. Today I'm using a red chemical a blue chemical and a yellow chemical. Now, I should tell you um, these chemicals are just food coloring mixed with water, but for the purposes of lab safety today, we're gonna treat these as if they were much more hazardous than they actually are um, because practice makes perfect. So um, now that I have checked my materials, I'm ready to get started on procedures. Procedure part one, Number one says label six test tubes in order A, B, C, D, E, and F. So I'm going to take each test tube off of my rack, use the dry erase marker to put a nice, big, visible label on my test tube. You can see I've labeled that one A, and then place it right side up inside the test tube rack. So give me just a second, and I'm going to magic the rest of those into labels. All right, so as you can see, I have all of my test tubes labeled very visibly big up at the top so I can read them as I'm working. And uh, step two of my procedure says to fill a beaker half full with water, which I took care of before we got started today. So I have that ready. And then step three says to make sure you have a waste container, which I already took care of as well before we got started on the lab. I'm moving on to step four. Four, which says into test tube A, measure 25 milliliters of the red chemical. So I'm going to take um, and I'm actually going to bend down at eye level here just to make sure that my measurements are incredibly precise. And I'm going to pour 25 milliliters of red liquid. Now I'm on just a touch over, so I'm going to use my pipette here out what little bit I don't need. Now that I've taken that out, it's really important that I not contaminate my clean chemical beaker by putting it back in. So I'm going to take that red chemical and put it into the waste container. Now that I'm finished, I can pour that 25 milliliters of red liquid into test tube A. It's incredibly important that when I'm done, before I move on to the next step, that I rinse my equipment. Um, my pipettes and my graduated cylinders are plastic and I definitely don't want to be mixing chemicals in a plastic container and risking melting all of my plastic wear. So got my pipette good and rinsed out and then I have rinsed out my graduated cylinder as well. That dirty water goes into my waste container and now I'm ready to get started on step five. Step five says to measure uh, 17 milliliters of yellow liquid. So I'm going to get that done really quick and show it to you. Okay, so one thing that I didn't mention earlier that you're going to want to pay close attention to are the measurements on your graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinders don't always measure in whole numbers, so make sure you're double checking and you have accurate measurements at all times. I've got 17 milliliters of this yellow liquid and I am pouring that into test tube C. And again, I'm going to rinse my equipment 
And then step six says to measure 21 milliliters of blue liquid and place that into test tube E. So I'm going to get that done really quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I rinsed out my graduated cylinder and I've measured 21 milliliters of the blue chemical. I'm going to pour that into test tube E. And at this point, I have finished procedure part one for the lab. And you can see that in my test tube rack, I have red, yellow, and blue chemical. Now I'm going to get started on procedure part two of the lab. Um, step one in procedure part two says to take from test tube C four milliliters and pour it into test tube D. So I'm going to take care of that really quick. Alright, I have my four milliliters in test tube D here, and now I'm ready to move on to step two, which says from test tube E, I'm going to measure seven milliliters and pour it into test tube D. So I'm going to take test tube E here, um, and I am actually using my uh, 10 milliliter graduated cylinder at this point, since my measurements are a little bit smaller. And again, I'm keeping that graduated cylinder on a flat surface. And I'm bending down at eye level. Oh, I've over poured just a touch. Um, instead of pouring my excess into the waste container, I don't want to skew the measurement in my test tube. So I'm going to pour some of that back. Let's see how well I can do this. Is this good? Just a little touch more. Sometimes it's hard to get those measurements just perfectly accurate, so it takes a little bit of time, but now that I've got my seven milliliters, I'm going to double check, and it does say that that goes into D with that yellow chemical, and then step two also says to swirl, so I'm just going to take the test tube out of the rack and swirl it just a touch. I don't want to splash it out of the test tube, but you'll see that it's changed colors, and I know it's hard to see in the camera, but it is green now. So instead of yellow or blue, I have a little green. Um, I'm ready to move on to step three. Um, as soon as I rinse here, step three says from test tube E to measure four milliliters and pour it into test tube F. So I'm going to take care of that real quick. All right, so I've measured four milliliters um, from test tube E, put them into test tube F. As you can see, it's not very much. It's still blue, no changes made. But now I'm gonna move on to step four. It says from test tube A, measure seven milliliters and pour it into test tube F as well. So I'll do that really quick. All right, I've got my seven milliliters from A measured into my graduated cylinder. Um, the instructions, I'm going to check one more time before I mix, say to pour this into test tube F, and I have F here, so I'm going to mix my red and my blue chemical, and then the instructions say to swirl, so I'm going to be careful not to splash, but I'm going to swirl that, and then you can see it's changed colors, I have a beautiful purple um, substance here, so I'm going to add that back and rinse my graduated cylinder. I'm getting so excited about these colors. I hope you're enjoying too. Um, and I'm ready to move on to step five. From test tube A, measure eight milliliters and pour it into test tube B. So let me get that done. All right, so I have my eight milliliters from test tube A and I'm gonna pour that into test tube B and rinse my graduated cylinder. Uh, step six is my last step and it says from test tube C to measure three milliliters and pour it into test tube B as well. So I'm going to get that ready. Okay, I've got three milliliters from test tube C and I'm just going to double check my procedure here. It does say to pour that into test tube B along with the red chemical. So I'm going to pour that in there, and then the instructions say to swirl. So we're going to swirl there, 
and then you can see when you look we have like a more orangey colored substance in that test tube and that is the end of my procedure so now it's kind of hard to see in the lighting but if you take a look at my test tube wrap I've got a rainbow I have red orange yellow green blue and purple all in my test tube rack. I'm so excited. Um, the last step here is for me to take measurements of all of these liquids and record that information on my data table. So I'm going to get my measurement tools good and clean and then I'm going to take those measurements. As I measure, I'm going to pour everything from the graduated cylinder into the waste container because I'm done with the lab today. So I'm going to start with a, this is test tube A. On my data table, it is red, so I'm going to record the color of the liquid as red. And then when I pour it into the graduated cylinder, it looks like I have, let's see, um, ten milliliters of red liquid. So under milliliters, I'm going to go ahead and write. 10 milliliters of red with liquid in test tube A. Then I will rinse again and we'll measure B. B, as you can see, is an orange, so you'll want to record that on your data table. Test tube B is orange, and we'll take that measurement really quick. Every last drop out of there that I can, and it looks like Test tube B is 11 milliliters, so make sure you record 11 milliliters of orange from test tube B. Pour that in my waste container. Rinse again. And now I'm ready to do C. So you can see test tube C is a pretty bright yellow, it's a beautiful sunshiny yellow. And I'm going to take that measurement really quick. like 10 milliliters as well. So make sure for test tube C that you write 10 milliliters of red, I'm sorry, yellow liquid. And we'll rinse. All right, moving on to test tube D. You can see here test tube D is, it's kind of hard to see in the light, but it's a green, it's like a it looks a lot brighter to me. It's a nice, bright, pretty green color in test tube D. And when I pour it in, it looks like we have 11 milliliters of green as well. So 11 milliliters of green liquid from test tube D. Make sure you record that on your data table. I am rinsing again. Make sure you're getting all that rinsing done and actually splashed a little bit. So if this were hazardous chemical, I would go at this time and wash my hands. I'm going to take care of that now and I'll be right back. Alright guys, my hands are clean. I am back and ready to do these last two test tubes. I have here test tube E. Um, you, let's see if you can see it in the light. It's kind of a blue, like a pretty dark blue color. Um, so make sure you record that on your data table. Then I'm going to pour it all into my graduated cylinder. And it looks like we have 10 milliliters of blue liquid from test tube E. So make sure that you have that recorded on your data table. And I'm going to rinse one more time so that I can take a look at test tube F. Here I have test tube F. You can see um, kind of in the light, hopefully, that that's a bright, uh, well, not bright. It's a really dark, pretty, like, very royal purple color. I'm going to pour it into my graduated cylinder. And I have... 11 milliliters of purple from test tube F. At this time, all of my chemicals um, that I've measured out are in my waste container and my 
test tubes are relatively empty. I am going to take all of my equipment, my pipette, my two graduated cylinders, and my test tube rack to the sinks, and I'm gonna wash all of this with soap and water using a test tube brush. Um, I'm also going to use a Clorox wipe to wipe down the counters, and I will get a fresh paper towel for the next group. Um, once everything has put away and the lab is completely clean, then it's safe for me to wipe down and take off my apron, take off my goggles, and make sure that I put them in my bottle of sanitizer as well. That is the Rainbow Lab, guys. I hope you have a great time. Um, I'm so sorry that you couldn't be here to do it with us, but I hope that you get the opportunity to try out the Rainbow Lab on your own because it's a lot of fun and a great experience. I hope you'll stay tuned for um, more lab tips and ideas as we go through the year. See you soon.